Hello students, and today we've got a short video about the computer mouse. So let's get started. And uh, here's our first slide, and it says warning. Beware, you may find some slides in today's presentation disturbing. At all times be respectful and use good manners. Yeah, well, I don't think we need to worry too much about that, but let's see. Okay, the evolution of the mouse. Today, the mouse is an essential input device for all modern computers, but it wasn't so long ago that computers had no mouse. The computer was controlled by typing commands on your keyboard. And there we are, we've got a couple examples there. And shut down and run explorer slash e. And those are typical of the sort of commands that you would have used to control a computer. In actual fact, you can still do that today. And there's the command prompt. You can open that up on Windows, and you can still use um, commands like that to operate Windows. Unfortunately, at a school, in a school environment, this is uh, not available to you because of security reasons. But certainly, if you've got a computer at home, you'll be able to use that command prompt to do all sorts of things. Okay, so the invention of the mouse was a much better way to go using the mouse. The mouse was invented by Douglas Engelbart in 1964 and consisted of a wooden shell, there's a wooden box you can see around it, a circuit board and two metal wheels that came into contact with the, with the surface it was being used on. So what's happened is this guy Douglas Engelbart, he's got an idea to use a mouse and uh, so he's gone off and he's created it. It's got a little button up there. Um, and uh, that I guess that button just did exactly the same as what the button does today. Okay. Right, in 1972, about eight years after it, the first mouse, a person, Bill English, improved the design by creating the ball mouse. And if you have a look inside, I don't know if you guys remember these, but I used to teach students with these ball, ball mouses. They had a great big round, quite a heavy ball inside them, and then they've got this wheel that rubs on the ball, and that spins that, and it goes through a light sensor, and it can measure, and it can sense when, you, when your ball is being turned. And then here's one the other way, um, so that's coming in from the other side. So basically this one senses when the mouse goes forward or back and this wheel here senses when the mouse goes left and right and you're able to of course do them both left and right. Uh, the thing about the ball is it became dirty and it stopped working and we used to forever be cleaning out bits of hair and all sorts of mud and things that got stuck around these wheels and the ball and would stop them working and so that was a big hassle um, anyway the world's first GUI in March 1973 Xerox computers sold the first GUI and that means it's a graphical user interface okay and it means that you can use the mouse so what happened is before we had the command line operation where we used to type in there whatever command we wanted the computer to do and then the mouse was invented and that was great because now you didn't need to know all the commands you could just click the buttons to do whatever you wanted to do so the mouse made it what it did is it made it possible for a huge number of other people to start using computers you didn't need to be a specialist or a computer nerd. Anybody was able to press a button and, um, uh, and, and the idea of the people developing the software was to put the buttons in, in places that made it obvious for the user that, that if that's what they wanted to do, that's what they needed to click. So once they had this, then computers became very popular or started to become very popular. It was still a few more years, they're saying 1973 there. Well, it was more like the 80s before computers started to really take off. Okay, so here we go. 
the first optical mouse in 1980. The ball was eliminated with the invention of the optical mouse. And the way the optical, optical mouse works is it's got a LED there, and it's got a light that shines on the surface, and then it's got this photocell, and it actually uh, can detect the movement through the um, through the the, rough, the roughness of the material that the mouse moves over. And the great thing about this is that it um, it got rid of this ball that kept on getting dirty and, and stuck, and it was ne it was never nearly as good as these new optical mouses. They were a big a big uh, improvement. Now here's a picture of a mouse, um, but in those days we never had this wheel button, it was just the left and the right, right mouse button. And we can say that the mouse finally gets some eyes and can see, and there we are, there's the photo cell. Okay, first optical mouse, it didn't sell well, as the inventors had a patent and the price was too high. So even though it came out in 1980, for probably 20 years after that, it didn't sell very well because basically the price was too high. Whoever invented it, I'm not sure who it was, um, had a patent on this um, photo cell that was able to read the surface of the, uh, the mouse pad and they, they wanted lots of money for it. So the mouses, these optical mouses were too expensive and people just didn't buy them. But then 1998, okay, 18 years later, and that's exactly how long a patent lasts, um, uh, they became cheaper and the, and the sales exploded and everyone began using them. Um, they became cheaper because the patent ran out. Okay, So therefore other people were able to manufacture them and, and they made them cheaper, they sold them cheaper, and just like the monitors, the more you make, the more you sell, the cheaper they become, and then it becomes more people buy them, which means that you make more, you sell more, etc. Okay, the tailless mouse. Right. The mouse has lost its tail. Okay, there's no cord out the back of it. 1991 saw the first wireless mouse that operated on radio frequency. Okay, so little USB uh, receiver there. It's just a receiver, it's not a transmitter. The transmitter is in the mouse because the mouse is only sending information. Okay, sending it to the computer because the mouse is an input device. It happened in 1991. And now today, there hasn't really been a lot of changes, but there's been a lot more designs of mouses that are available. So, there's all sorts of mouses here. Um, we've got gaming mouses down here. We have got a vertical mouse here, which people use if they get RSI in their, in their um, forearm. Uh, what else? What other mouses have we got? Uh, vibrating mouses, I'm not quite sure where they are. Uh, we've got fun mouse here. There's just these ones here which are sort of a standard one, although that one does have two, two mouse buttons like that. We've got these ball sort of mouses. Uh, they all work on very much the same sort of principle. But you, you can buy these days a mouse for whatever need you want. Okay. Right. The mouse is dying. And here's a disturbing picture. It's extinction like a dinosaur. Okay. Why do you think we might have this slide up here? Now have a think about it. Okay. It's because there's something new now that has come along and is starting to uh, take over from the mouse. It's not likely to take over completely, but it is a touch screen. Okay? The touch screen is the same as using a mouse. When you use a mouse, you're moving a cursor over a monitor. 
When you're using your finger on a touch screen, your finger is the cursor. So, uh, and people find that a lot easier to use than the mouse. Um, it's a lot more convenient, and of course, it has allowed the development of phones and tablets which don't need a mouse. Okay, but it's also allowed um, a greater range of, of options. With the mouse, you've just got a left button and a right button. Um, and you've got uh, click and you've got double clicks. You've even got triple clicks. But with the mouse, with the touch screen, you've got what are called mouse gestures. Okay, you've got your tap, which is the normal, the same as your um, your left click on the on the mouse, and tap and hold is the same. But then you've got two finger drags. Okay. Um, You've got spread and pinch, usually used for zooming in and out of maps or a picture or something like that. And uh, you've got varying other options. Now, it, depending on whether you're using an Apple device or an Android device, it, uh, you'll get different responses for these. And I'm not entirely familiar with them all, but they are certainly there and available. So that's the thing. With a touch screen, you've got mouse gestures. Okay. The touch screen is not really going to uh, eliminate or make the mouse extinct. The mouse will always be used on a desktop. The touch, you still have desk, uh, you still have desktop computers with touch screen monitors. Um, and they're very good. They're often all in one. Um, computers, but even so, the mouse is still more useful than the touch screen. Oh, they can work both ways, you can work both of them, but the mouse will still live on. So, go down, okay, right, so that's the end of that video. All you guys needed to do is just watch and listen and learn about the history and evolution of the mouse. We'll see you guys in the next video.